years worth of coming and speaking to this class. In the beginning, Strauss, the person who qualifies me for, to come and do this at all, would come with me. He was like two, three, would sit here and just kind of look at everybody. Um, now, you might run into him around campus. He's in a wheelchair. Um, he's always smiling. He wears this modified mohawk, which is him. Um, I'm not changing, however, what I'm saying in here because I'm trusting you to respect what I'm telling you. I'm going to be telling you things about him that you probably, if your mom or dad said about you, would be quite upset. Why do I do it? Because I'm assuming that you're in this class because you want to have something to do in the education field, something to do maybe in wellness, something as a career where you're going to be interacting with other people who might not be like you, and me offering you a little bit of a glimpse inside what it's like to be the mother of somebody who others might look at as different. Four disclaimers when I talk. One is, I can only offer you my perspective. Everything that I offer to you will be simply from my lens how I've experienced life, how I've lived it, what I believe to be true based on my experiences. I can offer you nothing else. So, number one disclaimer, it's my perspective. I can't do anything other than offer that to you. Number two, um, honesty is both a strength of mine, is in a good quality, and it's also a problem. It can work to your advantage, because if you ask me a question, I will honestly tell you whatever it is you want to know. I have a really... My filter has wide holes. <laughs> so if you would like to know something and feel like you could benefit from asking me, go for it. And I probably will maybe err on telling you more than you'd like to know, so I apologize in advance for that, but you can take advantage of it. Here's another one that you could try and challenge. Um, because it is important, I think, to understand the daily demands of what it's like when somebody has a disability, sometimes we're going to talk about things that feel more medical, something that feels more like you're in biology class. Um, I do that without apology because you need to know. But because I'm going to be talking to you about things that seem biological or physical in nature, I'm not going to skirt around body part issues, okay? We're going to use the real words for body parts. I could give you examples, but let's have it be more fun, and if you ask me a question and I need to use that uh, anatomically correct term, just don't get all giggly about it. You're college students, you all. I trust you. Finally, if you've been counting this, I think is my fourth one. I have yet to speak somewhere. I speak to teachers. I speak to students like you, different classes, if not this one, and wellness classes. A um, lot of different places. I have yet to get through one where at some point something has it made me cry. Now, I don't fall down up here. I won't, like, crumple. <laughs> I'll be okay. But fair warning, sometimes I take some of you down with me, depending on what it's about. Um, so grab your tissue if you feel you need to. Otherwise, don't worry. I might even stop and analyze and tell you why I believe I am crying about whatever it is. There are things that happen in your life that feel like the perfect storm. Does anybody know what a perfect storm means? Everything that could go wrong goes wrong. Feels like it. Everything that could go wrong, or all of the conditions align for something really dynamic to occur, and it does, okay? For some reason, we didn't know this perfect storm had been brewing. Mark and I were so square, we didn't drink, we never took drugs. I used to not swear. <laughs> we were even virgins when we got married. Our families had no indication of anything in either side of why we would have a child with major birth defects. We're not talking about the kind that you can fix afterwards. Some, yeah, but we're talking major life change in your life forever changed. When did we find out? On the day he was born. Could we have found out earlier? Yes. But why do the prenatal testing if nothing's going to go wrong? I think, in all honesty, I didn't want to know. I think I signed away permission to have some prenatal test because I didn't want to know what I would do if something was wrong. It was easier not to know. 
and just let God provide. I'm different today because of that. Were we taken care of? Mm -hmm. People were taking care of us. Could we say that we were divinely taken care of and providence took over? You could. Our son was born on a Sunday morning. All the doctors that he needed were in town. We didn't schedule that. Should we have scheduled that? Yeah. We were going to have a baby and he needed major surgery. We got lucky. Or maybe not. Did he carry transverse breach in my womb? Meaning he needed to be born by C-section? Yeah. Is being born by C-section good? If you have an open spine, which is what he has, spina bifida, your spine is open inside your body? Yeah. But we tried to turn him. They offer to pregnant women something called version, external version, where they relax your womb, and doctors crawl on top of you while you're in a hospital bed hooked up with IV, and they like push that baby around because it's healthier, they believe, to have a vaginal birth. So did we try to do that? Yeah. Am I really glad that didn't work? Oh, yeah. For whatever reason, though, as I'm laying there on this Sunday morning on the operating table and I lift him from my womb, I'm thinking, oh, I'm going to get to find out what's wrong. Because I thought something was wrong. He didn't move like... When I would hear pregnant women talk about their babies kicking them and keeping them awake at night, my baby didn't do that. I slept really well. Other than the fact he was cockeyed in my womb and I couldn't lay down without the feet smashing on top of the head or the head smashing on top of the feet. So that was like, and toward the end I was sleeping, sitting up in my bed. So that wasn't comfortable, but I wasn't being punched from the inside out. And there would be moments where I'd like, he's not moving in there. Now I have a flair sometimes for the dramatic, and some people think maybe I'm a little over the top. So I'm not going to be running around going, something's wrong with my baby. In particular because we've had a miscarriage before this. We'd lost a pregnancy at 11 weeks. There really had been nothing in the womb. It was a blighted ovum. And I had felt there had been nothing inside then either, too. So early on, really early, before you can really see really well with an ultrasound, the doctors had given me one about nine weeks into pregnancy, basically to reassure me that, you know what, crazy lady, there is a baby in your womb. Because I rushed that, we didn't get to see the opening in the spine. Now, let me tell you how early this birth defect occurs. What do you know about women and how they find out when they're pregnant? We talked about the perfect storm and things that go and swirl around you, right? I believe that all these things start in motion and they mess with your identity. Who am I now? I remember keenly when the miscarriage started going, oh my God, I am a woman who's had a miscarriage. I never planned on that. Um, but there are other things that get set in motion. Okay, certainly your faith. I already alluded to that earlier when I was asking you questions, didn't I? What happened? Faith. Okay. Just like a sleep. What about this one? Can you read that one? Mary. Who wants this one? Nobody wants to be married. Good luck. <laughs> also, would you maybe start to have concerns about your... Can you read that? Career? Yeah. Okay, you got it read. Oh, I love this one. Finances. Finances. This is expensive stuff. By the way, you get five of these in a box. You know how much the box costs? Can you read this one? Family and friends. Family and friends. Other part of the perfect storm are family and friends. I've got stories about that. But I'd like to know what you would like to think. Okay, take just a moment. I want you to come up with a list of questions that relate to that that you would like to hear me talk about based on what you've learned about what happened to our family on the 5th of May, 1991. What should we start with? The one that fits on the bottom? That's what I was just going to say. Remember what one that is? I don't know. Faith. You got it? You guys ready? Pass it here, Eric. What do you have questions about faith? 